Um, so let's get started. Welcome everyone to this session and hope they are going back to today being the fourth week and for the week. So so and I assume that this is the first time I'm hearing about the So do you think it is a beautiful definition what is the emotional intelligence is about? So what do you think of the Anyone wants to speak? Or is this the first time we are hearing about emotional intelligence? Okay. Okay, um, I'm giving you a speech. Let me just come into my I feel I Yeah, but now it's better now. Is it better now? It's not. Um, so much background noise. Okay. Um, give me this. Let me give you a notation, please. All right, how about now? Okay, good. Thank you very much. And thank you for your patience. So um, let's get started. So as I was saying, we are talking about emotional intelligence. And just let me know, you must have heard of it before. So what do you think it is? Just a brief definition of, or explain how and what, you know, emotional intelligence to be. Anyone wants to go? Anyone? Or oh, is this the first time we are hearing of emotional intelligence? This is the first time, Martin. Okay, so great. Sheila, this is not the first time. So Sheila, what do you like understand by emotional intelligence? Okay, um, go on, Abu Bakr. But Sheila, go first. Um, okay, so I've heard of it before, but I don't know whether it's quite, sorry. I don't know whether it's um, like a manual percentage, but emotional intelligence is like being able to relate to people in an emotional level. So that's what I understand. From it, like having your emotions in check and being able to understand emotions of other people, like the people who are around you, and yeah, just being able to be emotionally aware of yourself and everyone who's around you. 
All right, thank you, Sheila, for that um, definition. Yeah, emotional intelligence is all of those things you mentioned, but as um, we are going to look today, is more than like those, all, we have other components attached with it. But yes, definitely, emotional intelligence is about you being self-aware of your emotions, keeping it in check. Yes, but I okay. said, controlling your emotions in different situations. And um, I think Abuba carries up his hand too, then. Uh, no, it, it actually got answered. But one, my my other question is, like, is that uh, <laughs> like uh, in, like our emotions, like knowing our emotions or the other's emotions? Like, okay, so yeah, so it's about knowing our emotions and others' emotions and every other thing. So understanding and being able to reason with our own emotions. Yes. So emotional intelligence is is all of those definitions we've given but they've defined this like scientifically yes understanding your own emotions as well as other people's emotions being aware of your own emotions and other people's emotion and then at the end of the day you use the, those two like the knowledge from those two to um define how you behave in different situations so here yeah, emotional intelligence is your ability to accurately perceive your own your own and other people's emotion and then to understand the signals that this emotion send and about the relationship and then using that emotion and your understanding to define how you behave maybe to keep yourself in check how you react or maybe what you will say all of those things now um emotional intelligence has a lot of components to it so it, but it does not necessarily mean that if someone has like a good emotion, like if someone has high emotional intelligence, does not mean the person will be um, self have self confidence or maybe being proactive. It is not associated with all of those things. Well, some people like to ascribe it to it. Well, we've seen like if someone is maybe you have self confidence or if someone does not have self-confidence they may have high emotional intelligence so emotional intelligence let's say at the ground level the basic of it all is you understanding your own emotions and being able to understand the other person's own accurately and then using those things like what you've derived from it your understanding of it it will not define how you behave how you handle the situation so and as you can see, this is very important, not only to our personal life, but also to in the workplace. And OK, Martin. Uh, in the slide, uh, you, 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 you have mentioned uh, accurately. I don't think it's possible to accurately perceive another person's emotions because people are people, pe people are quite co emotional. People are quite complicated. So, okay, I understand it from a work a work perspective, but it's, mm -hmm. I don't think it's you can be accurate. I think you can be empathetic, but you can't be accurate. Okay, well, I'll beg to differ actually, because you see, with this emotional intelligence, it's it's just like a skill. So it's something you continue to work on and improve. And you know, most times, as we will just discuss later, most times when people feel a certain emotion, even ourselves. We will associate it like with the common type of emotions maybe oh i'm hungry i'm happy but beneath all of those things a lot of things a lot of other emotions is going on maybe you are feeling anxious maybe you are just like a lot of other emotions is going on so once you are practicing and you are like being um, self-aware and you are working on those things with time you'll be and before okay when you said not be able to recognize another person's emotion the first thing is you being able to like accurately understand your own emotions because once you are able to like do that then it will be easier for you to understand how other people's emotions as well say for example okay let me let's just go on what is the benchmark for it or is it measured measured like iq yeah like there are different tools that they've developed to measure and to measure emotional questions just like the intelligence questions as well but just like how we know all of those um, tools, it's just like a measure, yes, emotional quotient, EQ. So it's just like a measure. Sometimes it may not really be like accurate, but it's just like a measure. There are other tools that like to just assess yourself. And if you check online, you have all these um, like tests that I can take. So how accurate it will be will be 
according to how self-aware you are of yourself. So if you are taking those tests, because it will be a lot of like questionnaires, asking you questions, like stuff like that. So before you're able to answer those questions accurately, it means you must be emotionally aware yourself. So it's just, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So emotional questions is just used to measure emotional intelligence level. But before you're able to like accurately measure it, you have to be self-aware of those your emotions too. So now, so what are some of the misconceptions with emotional intelligence? The first one is that it's about you being emotional and polite and nice. Yes, emotional intelligence is all of those things, but it is more than how you just, maybe you are being polite to people. It is more than that. Say for example, if someone maybe does something wrong to you, like, you want to react, like you being emotional intelligence does not mean you don't handle the situation or maybe you avoid this by being polite. No, that's not it. So emotional intelligence is more than you being a nice person or everybody has like something good to say about you, it's more than that. So, and people, some people believe that it is an innate trait, like it is something that you are born with and it cannot be developed, but our studies are like different researchers worked on it and they found like emotional intelligence can actually be improved on but there is a cleavage to it we know we have different personality so some people they ha some people have like um they are more prone to like improve rapidly than others but that does not mean like that you will not be able to improve on it irrespective of your personality or your emotional um quotient level so it is something that can be learned and just like every other skill you can improve on it and work on it is for example if um say you you don't really know how to draw maybe when you were little you don't know how to draw yeah you are, you are not, we know some people are gifted with those drawing and when they're little like they know how to do those things but if they continue to work on it they'll get better just the same way like if you are not good at it and you continue to work on it you get better fine but you may not be to the extent of someone that has the talent and all of those things but that does not negate the fact that you can improve on it or you can work on it or does not mean like you have to be born with it before you can be emotionally intelligent so a lot of people perceive that uh, because women are generally more nice and perhaps more polite in most situations that they are better at emotional um, intelligence they have higher emotional intelligence um so which should not be entirely true then another thing is it is only important for personal relationships yes emotional intelligence is important for personal relationship but it is not only for that and just as different um, research has been carried out on like emotional intelligence in the workplace the impact of it Emotional intelligence applies to every facet of our life, your personal, your um, professional life, all of those things. And it is not meant for just leaders and managers or any of those other stuff. But one thing is in the workplace, depending on your field, different um, maybe um, work require different emotional intelligence level. You cannot um, express, for, for instance, someone maybe a scientist that is always like working in the lab, carrying out research in laboratories, working with specimen and the likes. And all he has to do is just work on those things, get his results, get it published. You have like limited um, interaction with people compared to someone that is a sales rep where you have um, to interact with people always. Fine, those things, you like your work, um, the type of work line will define the level of emotional intelligence required, but that, that does not mean like it is meant for maybe only leaders or managers or any of those things. It's coming handy in any situation. So now, now that we have a little bit of understanding of what emotional intelligence is, so why should we care about these things? Why are we talking about it? After all, like 10 academies just for you to get your technical training, like get, um, get into workplace and the likes. But, why we should care is because we recognize that emotional intelligence is it plays a crucial role in not, like if your technical skills get you to the um, the job maybe you eventually get employed being emotional intelligence will enable you to like stay in those jobs even get promotion and the likes and we make your work um work life more like seamless 
your because it will define how you relate with people, why you get along well with people, and especially now, like we are in a globalized economy where you have to handle negotiation, where you have to like socialize, collaborate, and all of those things. So you have to be emotionally intelligent for you to carry all of those roles out, and maybe you being um, successful in your career is dependent on how well you perform in those other aspects and not just the technical aspect as well. And just as research has shown here by Schmidt, so in 2012, we carried out some research and then he found that like the emotional quotient is responsible for 58% of your job performance. So like it is important because that like sometimes if you notice in some workplace, you feel like, oh, this person is really good in those technical things, but this is the person that is getting promoted. You get, like, this other person that is getting promoted is also good, but not like the other one. Well, maybe perhaps that other person, like, keeps to himself, does not really relate well with other colleagues. And maybe it's just the um, company just decides to, like, keep him with them because he's really good, but he does, he's not really good at maybe working with people or any of those other social stuff. So. We find that a person that is emotionally intelligent um, will have like they will perform better at work. They will get the promotions. They will get um, higher in their career aspects. And then they found like ninety percent of top performers they have high EQ. And also there is about twenty nine thousand dollar difference between people with um, high emotional intelligence and those with low emotional intelligence level. So this has shown like we have to pay attention to emotion, our emotional intelligence level, our emotional intelligence, and all of those things. But for us to do that, we've been talking about emotional intelligence. Like it's about relating with people, understanding your emotions, and understanding other people's emotion. But before we can really understand it, or how, before we can really define it, we have to um, know what are some of the components of emotional intelligence. Okay, so these are some of the components of emotional intelligence. So the first one here. So the first one here, we have the self-awareness, we have self-regulation, we have motivation, empathy, and social skills. Now, looking at the first one, which is um, self, which is self, self awareness. Please give me a minute. Okay, so which is self awareness? And basically, for just from what it is, and I think we've talked about being self aware when we're talking about. Um, is it effective communication or proactivity in the workplace? I can't really remember, but I know this is not the first time we'll talk about it. So self -aware, being self-aware simply means like you knowing your own emotions, recognizing your strengths and your weaknesses, and understanding your values, your goal, like understanding yourself, being self-aware. So now, some of the hallmark or indicators of you being self-aware is that you can, if you can accru um, accurately self-assess yourself, and if you can, like, you have this for constructive criticism, you welcome, like, even the negative feedback, and you you try to, like, understand where why the person is giving you those feedback. Take, for example, now, if you are a manager in the um, at work, or even maybe you are just an employee, and you recognize, like, if you are giving a project, if you um, and if you are given a project to work on or a task to work on, and you've known yourself like you don't really do well with tight um, deadlines when deadlines are really approaching, you don't do well with those. You know the type of tasks maybe like you jump onto, or even when you've accepted the work, you just get right onto it and get it done on time, so that it prevents like you, like you um, dealing with them at the um, deadline when the deadline is fast approaching because you fully understood yourself that oh you don't work well with that you're not giving your best work when the deadline is approaching and you're able to do that because you are emotionally aware of your shortcomings of your weaknesses likewise then we have the second component of um, emotional intelligence which is the self-regulation so here is about you controlling or maybe you are redirecting some disruptive emotions. Maybe you are in a meeting and then you have one particular colleague that is just seem like he's attacking every idea you bring on, like he's interjecting and everything. And right there, you just feel like yelling at him, like just keep quiet, let me just go on and finish my sentence. Stop 
completing my sentences for me. But then you you being um self-regulatory is just like you um like trying to calm yourself with direct that your anger or whatever emotion you are feeling at that moment with directing it to other things or just like understanding yourself better say for example when a team maybe maybe you are the team lead and then one of your team members watches the um, presentation then instead of you like screaming and maybe just yelling at him and all of those things, instead you decide to maybe consider other possible reasons for the failure, like you explain the consequences of um, of his action to the, to the person and what the impact has on the entire project you are working on. Now we have the third component, which is um, motivation. So the third component, motivation, is being driven to achieve or maybe this for the sake of achievement. And this has to do with your drive for um, finishing a task, maybe accomplishing your goal. Now, if you look back, when we were defining um, emotional intelligence and when people were contributing, it was basically talking about you understanding um, your emotions and then other people's emotions and maybe how it um, define your actions. But now when we are looking at the components, we see like even um, the motivation aspects, which has to do with self, it's not like you understanding maybe emotions per se or other people's emotion per se, but you um, driving yourself, you being able to like be um, self-drive. You have the the you have the self-drive to um, complete a task, and even when you like you have the drive to commit to something and all of those things. So those are part of the another component of emotional intelligence. Now for the third one, um, the empathy. So empathy is like you understanding other people's feeling, considering other people's feeling and how um, before making decisions, recognizing how maybe how you do stuff, how it will affect their, um, how it will affect how they will feel, how they will see what you are doing and all of those things. So it's you understanding others and developing others. And it also includes you being sensitive to maybe cross-cultural um, cross cultural differences so just understanding the next person. Then the third one, and the fifth one, sorry, the fifth component of emotional intelligence is social skills. And this social skills is about managing relationships, like with the desired, um, in the desired um, direction, you managing relationships, you being able to like communicate well with people, to influence them, like all of those leadership things, and we have conflict management, the team capabilities, and the likes. So, for example, if a manager like wants to um, his company to adopt a better internet strategy, then he finds like kindred spirits or people of the same um, people of the same mind to work on those things, and like he just be able to like inspire other people to do something. So, so she, um, those are like the five components of emotional intelligence we have you being self-aware and out of these five self-awareness is the uh, i would say the most important of them because you cannot get to every other state if you are not like being self-aware so self-awareness is like the very important step in all of these things so now let's look at this scenario together so now let's look at this scenario together we have the first one and I would really like you guys to like interact, like if I ask questions, so that we will understand this thing together. So the first scenario we have Nina. Nina is in a meet and is in a team meeting. What does it mean by self, by accurate self assessment? So what it means is you being able to like um like listen to other people's feedback and you've been able to like think about it on your own and see reason with them or it could it definitely mean even you sitting down on your um by yourself and analyzing a situation maybe something happened then you'll be able to understand why did you do why did you react like that you'll be able to like correctly label your emotion at that um, at that point so let's look at this scenario what's the question so abubakar do, um, do you understand like what I mean by self accurate self assessment? Okay, so so accurate self assessment is basically you being able to accurately label your emotion, be able to like label your emotions correctly, 
and this can come maybe from maybe feedback that other people has given you or even you just sitting down meditating on your actions maybe your past actions or just meditating by yourself and recognizing those things so let's look at this scenario when we look at it together you understand more of what i'm saying so the first one we have nina so nina is in a team meeting with her co-worker gerard and feels frustrated as he continues to belittle her ideas and speak over her so to make matter worse he brings up her previous mistakes in front of their colleagues making her feel embarrassed and angry now in this situation we can just come to the conclusion that nina is angry like that's how she's feeling which is correct but we need all of those um all the anger she's feeling and every other thing that there is if nina just takes some time to maybe sit down and maybe assess herself maybe sit, uh, um, really understand why she's angry or she'll find out that it could be that um perhaps she's also sad maybe she's not feeling just anger alone but she said like her project because of project field and she could even be maybe anxious about her, her career going like not going forward and the likes and all of those things like all of those things is just being buttressed by the anxiety maybe she's also feeling anxious with the way like gerard is just attacking her and she's feeling anxious that her project did not work well and then she's also maybe she's even thinking about oh will she even get fired and all of like beneath just she's not just feeling angry but she's also sad that her project is not working well she's anxious that she may lose her job and if she just sit down to recognize those things she'll feel like even when gerard is attacking her all of she um gerard's opinion and what he's saying is just feeding into all of those angers and all the other emotions she's feeling by herself so if she uh, maybe takes some time to meditate and think about all what is happening she recognizes like it is not just gerard that she's angry at perhaps if she's not maybe anxious or if she's if she knows that oh like she have recognized her mistake in the project she already knows how to move forward with the project or if she recognizes that she will not be fired in this project because like if she's if all our other maybe anxiety or if if the sadness is not there perhaps all the um the way like gerard is just interjecting her like attacking her ideas she may not really feel the, that much anger she may not feel that much anger towards him so that is just like you being able to um accurately label yourself like from here now nina could just easily say oh she's angry and perhaps so she's the type of person that will just move on from the situation and that's it or maybe she's the type that will just bottle it up and just keep it like bottle it up such that when Jagger does any other thing she bottle it up again and at the end of the day maybe she will just have an outburst in the workplace which is not something that is um that is a good idea or something that is good at all so so if she can like sit down to accurately um label our emotions and understand why she's feeling that way then she'll be able to um maybe find ways to feel better to improve such that if Angela continues to make other comments she will not really affect her that much so that is um, the importance of being self-aware likewise we have the second scenario but do you understand what i'm saying before i move on to the second scenario okay okay so the second scenario here we have mikhail so Mikhail returns home from a long day work, exhausted and overwhelmed. His wife notices his frustration and asks what's wrong. And he just said, I'm having a tough day, he replies. Then he pulls out his laptop and decides to finish um, the projects that he's working on. Now, OK, Martin. I want to ask a question about scenario one. Huh? OK. In that scenario, uh, I have a question. Why should Nina be the one to be self-aware should indeed be self-aware that he's uh speaking over her and uh belittling her like belittling her idea yes and he also sit back and think about it think about be self-aware that the things he might say might affect nina's personality or, or, or make her feel a certain way even if he hasn't in, directly intended to, to to do that isn't that also being self-aware as well yes gerard too needs to be self-aware well, I just decided to like uh, speak more on Nina because like she's the one like 
was being attacked and in most cases that is like she's the one that will feel most of the emotions likewise gerard too can also sit down and just think about like why is he attacking nina perhaps he's maybe um hunting for a promotion or he just maybe wants to be the one that is recognized and if you understand those things you, and is self-aware like maybe um like the way he's going about it all is all wrong perhaps you can then um, decide to show all of maybe his competence in every other way so it's not only Nina that needs to be self-aware Gerard too could also be self-aware and even self-regulate himself so yeah so um Martin can I go on Okay, so um, yes, let's yes, move yes. on. To, okay, so let's move on to the second um scenario. So from here now, from the second scenario, it's easy for Mikhail to just sit down and say, "Oh, he's stressed." But another thing here is fine. Mikhail may be stressed, but if you look at it, if you look at it, maybe what is really why is he stressed from a job that. Like maybe a few uh, months back, he used to feel like really um, happy about doing the job and all of those things. If he starts down to understand why he's stressed, it could be that perhaps he's not enjoying the work anymore. Or maybe, and if he's not enjoying the work anymore, why is he not enjoying the work? Is it maybe the, the new manager, like his new lead um, manager, or is it that he's not just interested in that line of um in that career anymore maybe wants to pursue something entirely different and if you are under if he sits down to understand the reason why he's feeling stressed and why he's feeling all of those things then you'll be able to regulate his emotions um better so that's just in the case of uh, a so what this um what i just want you to recognize from these two scenarios is most times when we um when something happens to us, when we feel in a certain way, when we experience some emotions, it may not be just the apparent one that we know maybe you are just happy, you are angry, and any other apparent emotions, the common ones that we like to put out there. It could be like a lot of other emotions could be on uh, underneath that is just feeding to those ones. So if you're able to understand those other emotions and label them correctly and be self-aware, of those emotions and why we are feeling that way they will be able to handle the situation better so and these are some of the other type of emotions they have like alongside the angry you've been sad and all of those things it could be maybe you are jealous or you have you feel victimized or confused or like any of those other emotions there so being able to accurately label um, our emotions to goes a long way in self-regulating them so now the next one is um, also in self-awareness. So how can we develop this self-awareness? And I've said before, the first one that I really mentioned is meditation. So you can see that you can decide to sit down and maybe think about how you handled the situation, why you felt that way, um, why you felt that way, what's happening. Just sit down and meditate for 10, five minutes. And you can even ask some colleagues, um, like people you trust, maybe your teammates, your mentor, anybody, people that you trust. It could be your family members as well that you trust and ask them for feedback about how you behave, what do they think about your behavior. And don't just ask them. You can also ask them to, oh, how can I handle this thing better? How can I? How can I improve on those things? And in some cases, for example, especially in the workplace, say you are, um you have your other team members with you, you can you can enlist your team in keeping you like accountable. Say for example, if you um, maybe after asking for feedback, then your team member lets you know that you are a type of person that you interject when they are talking, especially in the meeting. So, and you too, you've noticed those things. So one that way, you already like you are being you are self-aware of that behavior so and you ask your team members like how can you improve on it maybe someone suggests oh you can count one to um, one to ten before if you feel like speaking just count one to ten and let the other person finish their sentence before you you say anything or some people can even recommend any other uh, method maybe you should just like stamp your feet gently so any of those things maybe that they recommended to you so maybe you've practiced those things say for two weeks or thereabouts, you can still go back to your colleagues and ask them for, oh, how have you improved? Like just to get better. So 
now so goes in and then it's um, being self-aware so the next one is self-regulation so here for us to for you to be able to like self-regulate the first thing you have to know is you should understand your values what are the things that are important to you because when you feel like actually when you feel like um outburst or yelling at a at the team member you should be able to like address like what is really important to you in that moment towards your goal say for example in the previous example i gave like the um the team member did not do well on the presentation and you just wanted to yell so in that moment you can sit back you can under like really evaluate your value what's really important to you well and you know like maybe what's really important is um, getting your clients satisfied. So with that, you you know, like yelling at your team member will not really help anything. Instead, maybe you um talk to you talk to them, let them understand what's really going on and why their actions is maybe drawing back or the um or the impact of their actions and all of those things. So also refrain from negative thoughts. You know, sitting down and just like thinking, oh, I'm not good enough. We feel from negative thoughts and recovering. And even after all of these things, you still have maybe an outburst in the workplace. So how can you get past it? Um, most important, you should like apologize to the person you maybe swimmed at or the person you behave badly to. And most times, not just apologize and say, I'm sorry, I did that. And then can we all forget about it now and expect the person to just forgive and you expect the relationship to be mended. Most times, you, when you want to apologize, you address what you are really feeling at the moment, why, what really happened. Say, for example, maybe before leaving to work um, for work that morning, perhaps your spouse or your parents or any of those other people in your family got you angry. So like with the anger and everything, you just went to work. Then on getting there, you found that like your team member did not still perform well in the, in the presentation or was just not giving you what you expected them. So, and in that event, you yelled at the person. So now you want to apologize. You should let them know that, oh, you were angry initially because of this. And that is why you acted out like that. And you are sorry. And this is what you are doing to just give the person more information. So now the, to the third um, component of the third component of um, emotional intelligence, which is motivation. Okay, which is motivation. So how can you be motivated? We've talked. We've talked about this. I think being the proactive that you should seek out like-minded people. You should use um realistic affirmations, embrace challenge and resilience, and you should know when to like seek for help. So most importantly, identify your goal and what drives you. Then for the empathy, always acknowledge and like validate people's um acknowledge and validate their people's feeling, then ensuring like that they feel heard. And we've talked about using active listening method. I can use active listening for the person to feel like they you hear what they are saying and you feel what um maybe how they feel like you can empathize with them. So also you should try to like see for their from their perspective, see from their perspective and provide guidance and support when needed and every other like these are just some tips to like guide or help you be more empathetic to your teammates. Then with the social skills. So with social skills, the first thing is you have to um, prioritize the relationship. So prioritize the relationship, acknowledge and share like credits with team members. Cultivate a friendly, cooperative environment and be like just and collaborate and openly communicate with people. So those are some things I am rushing kind of because I realize we spent a lot of time initially and we just have 15 minutes left for the session. But those are just some tips there. And I oh, okay. So now before we move on to the scenario, I just realized like I jumped one slide. Yeah. So application of emotional intelligence in the workplace. So emotional intelligence is actually in the workplace is important, as we've said, and it comes in handy even when you're writing emails, you're giving feedback in meetings, negotiation, the cross -cult like cross-cultural um, differences, even making decisions and all of those things. So emotional intelligence comes in handy too. So for example, maybe you wrote a very long detailed email to your supervisor 
And then like what you got in response was just a one word and answer, maybe no or something like that. Like this can make you feel somehow. So how can we address that? Because email is something like that we do very well. So what you can do is when you're writing email, you should explicitly state how you feel in the email so that the other person will not assume what um, you are feeling. Because most people, when they are reading maybe a text or an email, the way they interpret it most times comes from how they feel at the moment. So you can say, for example, you send an email, um, maybe you received an email from your manager saying, oh, like the person does not, like you should redo, maybe um, redo the introduction. Perhaps you wrote a, okay, let me see. Perhaps you wrote a code and then you send it to your manager. On your own part, it's working well, but maybe your manager feels like you do not follow the um, the guidelines to writing codes and all of those things. And we just told you, oh, you should re rewrite them using so so and so guidelines. So now you, you don't know maybe, is he happy about the work you did? Like, you don't know how you should interpret that. Now, if your manager had maybe responded with, oh, I'm really happy about what you, um, the code you've written, but I think um, but you can improve on so, so and so, or you should implement so, so and so style of writing code, like you feel much more better. So when you're writing emails or texts, you can explicitly state how you feel there. So also when giving feedback, Emotional intelligence is also important, but I'll not dive too much into it because we've talked about like giving feedback. Was it earlier this week or I think, okay, last week. So emotional intelligence is also important in meeting, when you are giving meetings. So you, and here what really comes in handy is you being empathetic, empathetic towards your, um, your team members or whoever it is that is in the meeting there with you. And this um, emotional intelligence comes in and the in meetings as well because it will enable you to like read the room well. You will be able to like read the room well. We supporting the room in the meeting and all of those things. And it will guide how you will like handle the meetings there above. It also comes in in negotiation, but most importantly also in um, cross cultural differences. Say for example now, in um, like in the US. Most like culturally, they they admire if you show enthusiasm. You are like very assertive in the workplace. You show enthusiasm. You express how you feel about a particular um your opinion about um, maybe an idea. You state it well. Like those, all of those things are welcomed in the US. But unlike, for example, say um other research, uh, say like for example China, that they value maybe self control and modesty. They not like they don't welcome you being. Um, overly expressive or showing too much enthusiasm and even your boss could even feel it like oh you're just trying to show off so all of emotional intelligence here will guide you to understand different people's culture in terms of how they express their emotions so just like how if you are traveling to maybe a country where you don't understand their language you try to like learn about it so the same thing goes from um, emotional intelligence here if you eventually get a job in say in europe in the netherlands or in the us or anywhere else so you should try to like understand the the settings of the workplace first they are the way they work um the we are can like how the work setting is try to understand like their the way they express their emotions so you try to like fit into so that's all there is about emotional intelligence in the workplace that i want to talk about so now going to the scenario that i'll just say so here, this, in this scenario, so you're an employee at a tech company and you discovered on Tuesday that your manager scheduled you to work on Thursday, which is a day you had previously requested off. So you have already made expensive plans that cannot be changed, incurring a um, cannot be changed without incurring a financial loss. You base this plan on your manager's assurance that you would, that you would have the requested time off. However, another team member who rarely requests time off is feeling sick and has requested Thursday off to seek medical attention. So the team member will not be available on that day. So your manager, who is typically like who typically honors your requested day off, believes you should forgo your day off this time because you receive you often receive time off and the unit needs like needs to be adequately staffed. As a result, your manager is like is defensive, like is not giving you the time off, and insists on the need for sufficient and staffing. 
Now, given this scenario, and for example, this is what is happening. So given this scenario, and given that you don't know the reason why your manager rejected your day off, say, for example, you just know that, oh, maybe on Tuesday, you just got an email that you need to come to work on Thursday. And you are just like, you are frustrated. Like, I requested this day off. So you sent an email to your manager that, oh, I requested this day off. And you just sent it back that it cannot give you the day off because it needs more people to, um, at work that particular day. Now, you are feeling frustrated. and. So what, how will you like explain yourself? So what will you do in this scenario? Keeping in mind that, that you have like, you've made plans and you only made those plans, believing like your manager has already assured you like that will give you the day off. So now what would you do in that scenario? How will you handle this situation? Anyone? Anyone wants to speak? Anyone? Or you don't understand what I'm saying? Are you guys still here with me while I'm speaking to myself? Okay, okay, great then. Okay, so we are still here. So what are you going to do in this case? What approach or what do you think you can, how will you handle it? Or what will you do? Or will you just like, okay, my manager said I should go to work and that is it. So you not even bother to even maybe meet with him to have a conversation about it. Or you just believe like, oh, he's the manager, so he has the finance and that is it. So whatever plans you've made, you incur the financial loss and you don't mind. So what will you do in this scenario? Well, if this happened to you, what will you do? Yeah, it's a tricky one. Just think about it. So how will you handle this? How will, what will you do? Yeah, you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so when you have the one-on-one -on -one conversation, what will you say to the manager? Like, how will you explain yourself? And you should remember the manager, because like every time you ask for a day off, the manager grants it. Go on, Henno. Uh, maybe the company could uh, reimburse you for the money you lost, whatever expensive thing you bought or uh, planned. If the company would reimburse you, it's so, okay. So you like you meet with um, your manager, and then you explain your plights, and then you state that the if you put it this way, like the only reason you come to work on Thursday is if the company will reimburse. How will you go about? How what will you see? That will come to him. Uh, I mean, like you could explain to them that you have spent money. And the uh, only way you could come back to work is if they reimburse you. Maybe you bought a ticket to somewhere or something. Like you could say to the only way I could come is if you reimburse me, otherwise, I'm going to lose money. Okay. So, yeah, so that is a really nice one in the sense like you have an approach. So, but realistically, I don't think the company will like um, incur the loss, at least not all of it. So like what you can do is maybe you speak to your manager and if it's something like, if it's something you can work on remotely, such that even when you don't, maybe you are out of office, but when you have the time, you still work on the project. Or if even maybe you speak to them about um, them handling the, um, incurring the loss, or pay for the, or reimbursing you the, um, the fee. It could be, oh, you, you guys can even negotiate. Maybe they pay half or maybe they pay 70% of it and any of those other things. And you can just, is I like the idea of you having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your manager. And then at that particular time, two of you come, like you recognize that, oh, you see, you, 
you should also like listen to your manager and recognize like from his own listen to his own perspective about it and what is most important here is you should know like your manager always grants you the day off so this time around something must definitely be wrong so you could like um try to understand why which is like your team is that is sick and he really is um with he really is request for for time off so yeah I think the bottom line here and what we are just trying to emphasize is when such scenarios happen maybe similar maybe different which what you should do is you should um, speak to the person try to listen to their perspective be empathetic about it so and yeah so so now that we've talked about emotional intelligence let's see what we have for the challenge but um can we move on before we move on to the challenge can I go on? Okay, great. So let me see. Okay. Okay, so this is the document here. So um this beginning is just explaining emotional intelligence. You can read that on your own. So what you have the exercise for this week, there are five exercises. So the first one, let's look at this thing together. So after graduating, you receive a four-month internship an internship offer from IBM. So in the second month, your manager requested a one-on-one -on -one meeting to provide feedback. During the meeting, your manager expressed the following concerns. So he said, he observed that you struggled with dealing with change or unexpected challenges when working on projects. The, the day before your meeting, the project supervisor, not your manager, the, sup the project supervisor had announced a sudden change in the project deadlines requesting everyone to adjust their workflow. While your teammates, your teammates welcomed the change with proactive approach, you commented that management should finalize their approach as frequent changes affects your focus. So additionally, your manager pointed out that you, don't, uh, you often kept to yourself at work and doing social functions. As a result, he assigned you the task of planning the next month's uh, team bonding activity. So here now, in the, in the first scenario, your manager will have like that. You you find out that you are de uh, you you struggle with dealing with change and all of those things, and also that you keep to yourself in the workplace. So what you have to do here is reflecting back. So what would be better response to express your concern about the change? So in the um, meeting when your supervisor told you about maybe the change to the um, the project, and then you just maybe you told them or anyhow else you blotted it out but your manager feel you should not have expressed yourself like that so now reflecting back how would you what's the better way for you to handle that situation to express yourself to the project supervisor or even your manager about how um what you feel about the old change to the project how, how what better way would you have handled this in the situation so the second one is moving forward what five steps would you um, take to adopt an adaptable mindset to navigate future unexpected challenges. So now, the second exercise, considering the company's casual and youthful atmosphere, propose a creative and engaging virtual activity that caters to diverse interests and promotes team collaboration. So this activity, you should provide the activity name, the reason you chose this activity, the description and the short script on how it is played like how everything will look like so so that is that for the second exercise then the third one is with the support of your team members and colleagues you've developed your emotional intelligence and technical skills becoming quite proficient so consequently you received a return offer and worked alongside five colleagues in different teams what's at the same level so two years later, you were promoted to oversee teams, and now you supervise three colleagues, three colleagues you previously worked with. While you are excited to take on on new challenges, two out of the three out of the three are hesit uh, hesitant to listen to your ideas and they believe to them. So as you work to establish yourself in this position, you must navigate their resistance and foster a positive, productive team dynamic. So you should explain three approaches that you will use to handle this situation. 
And then the second thing is explicitly states what you would say if it's maybe you decide maybe one of the approaches you start to maybe have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. So what would you say to them? What will this meeting entail? How will you go about it? So explicitly states what you will say, or if you decide to maybe send them an email or any of those other, which is one of the approach. So what would they entail? So for each of the approaches that you mentioned, let me tell us what it will be about. What will you don't just say, oh, I'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. Tell us what you will say at the, at the meeting. What, how you do envision it to go down. Now, the fourth exercise. So additionally, one of your team members, Sarah, is going through a personal situation that is impacting her work performance and morale. You learn through office gossip that Sarah's daughter was diagnosed with cancer leading her to manage caregiving duties alongside her workload. Due to Sarah's distractedness at work, the team is behind schedule on a very important project. So now, as a team manager, you are concerned about Sarah's well-being and the project's deadline. So you decided to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her. So what would be the agenda of the meeting? So what would be the agenda? Agenda one, two, three, I don't know how many agendas you want to include, or if it's just one. So what would be the agenda of the meeting? Then what what would you cover in on each of the agenda? Now keep in mind that Sarah did not tell you that her daughter was diagnosed with cancer. It was just through office gossip. So we're putting that in mind. So how would you approach her? What would you say to her? How will you handle the meeting? What will you discuss in the meeting? What's the agenda of it? And what's, what do you aim to gain from um, having a meeting with her? So those are the um, the four exercises. So once, once you've answered all of those things, create the PowerPoint presentation with the maximum of 10 slides that detail your answers to the tax above so that is what we have for this week and um you is there any question on the challenge should i go over it again every so i assume everyone understands okay great so yeah that's the um and the deadline is on saturday 8 p.m etc and also when you are um filling out your answers in the ppt adhere to like the um the principles of good presentations be conscious of your grammar and all of those things and try as much as possible not to use ai to um, create answers for this so just sit down, think about what you will do, your approach to all of those things, what you, how you will answer them. So yeah, that is what we have for this week. And I hope you've gained one or two from this. And our advice, like we've talked about emotional intelligence and every other session that we've talked about with the career team. We know like this career session is quite different from the technical, like that you have to like have um, hands-on, experience and all of those things here is just you filling out answers and well it would really be helpful and it would be beneficial if say for example with the emotional intelligence we talked about you put it in practice say um maybe with the self-awareness you go and decide maybe, maybe today tomorrow you ask your colleague your behavior try to seek feedback from them be open to more um constructive criticism and don't see it as like they're attacking your person, but rather they just want you to be better. And you can even practice maybe five minutes meditation a day or 10 minutes meditation, just sit down and think about um, your behavior, just to be more aware. So in essence, just put what we are um, saying, put it in practice so that once you get employed, it will be easier for you to navigate the workplace because it is, very important to get the job or it is more way more important to to be able to like keep the job so yeah have a um wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your evening so i guess that is all let me stop recording